Welcome to Matt's Metalworking. In this video I'll be showing you how to tap threads on a drill press. This can be done by using the power of a drill press, but for this video I'll be doing this by hand instead and I'll be sharing some tips along the way. If you haven't seen my other channel, a couple months back I did a tool mount install on my truck. Instead of using nuts and washers, I wanted a more rigid setup. I used a couple stainless steel plates in behind instead. For marking these out, I took measurements from the clamps to determine the position of the fastener holes. If you're not applying any heat to the part, go over the area with a marker. Sometimes scriber lines can be hard to see, so a high contrast between the black marker and the silver from the scriber lines is easier to see. Caliper is used to mark out the basic location, and then the lines are finished up using a square and scriber. The great thing about a marker is that if you make a mistake, you can touch up the area easier and rescribe those lines again. After that, the whole center points are marked out with a center punch. This creates a dimple in the material, a spot where a drill can lock into place and it prevents it from wandering. Here's a quick view of a layout before I start drilling. Next is my fastener of choice. If you're looking for a portable organization solution for fasteners, I would highly recommend these from OEM Tools 22186 Parts Containers. They come in a three-piece set consisting of two small containers and one large version that you see here. You can easily take your fasteners to your workspace, has a lid, protects the fasteners, and some of the compartments are adjustable. A link to this from Mobile Distributor Supply will be included in the video description. The fasteners I'll be using is a 1032. If you are unsure of the fastener type, a great way to verify this is using a tap and die set. These sets typically come with a thread gauge. This measures the pitch of the fastener or threaded hole. There are two versions, SAE and metric. Here I'll be using SAE. A thread gauge is made up of various leaves. Some have more than others. Each of these leaves have their own thread pitch, which has a number stamped on the side. Now that we have the thread type, looking for the matching die nut. We'll be looking for a 32 in size. The die nut should fit like a nut. It should thread on easily, having proper contact with no binding if it's a clean fastener. Stamped on the die will be a size. Just like the fastener, it's a 1032. Using this number, look for the matching tap. There are different types of taps available such as tapered, bottoming, plug, spiral pointed, gun taps, spiral fluted, etc. However, for this video, I won't be getting into all the specific examples. I'll be doing a through hole, so a tapered tap will do just fine here. If you are working with a blind hole, you'll want to start with a tapered or plug tap first, then finish up with a bottoming tap, so that blind hole is almost fully threaded. On the side of the tap will be a size. It'll either be etched or stamped. Etched labels tend to be hard to read and will eventually wear off. Next is referring to a drill and tap index. While these do come with tap and die sets, they can be limited to what's available in the set. These alternative charts are typically available at your local fastener supplier, so based on the tap size, this would be a number 10. We have two different thread types to pick from under here, which is 24 and 32. We're working with a 32. Going over a column, it requires a number 21 drill bit, which is 159 thousandths of an inch. Not all drill bit sets have specific sizes available. Thankfully, this chart also lists an alternative metric, which is a 4.1 millimeter. I don't have a number 21 or 4.1 millimeter drill bit, but I do have a 4 millimeter drill bit, which is about 2,000 smaller than a number 21. A center drill will be used to prevent the drill from wandering first. You can lower the chuck and spin it by hand on the center punch mark. This will help with alignment. Then clamp it in place. It'll only be a light cut. If you are working with a larger drill bit, you may need to go deeper. The piece is clamped into place so it does maintain its position, but if it does happen to grab, it won't rip the piece out of my hand. Apply some cutting oil and then drill the part. Next is making a pilot hole. Pilot holes create a path for the final size to follow through and it helps reduce any drilling force. Reducing drilling force prevents the bit from wandering which may affect the accuracy or create an oblong hole. This is stainless steel, it requires more drilling force, therefore there's a greater chance of affecting the accuracy. Apply cutting oil, this too aids in drilling and helps reduce the bit of overheating which can shorten its life. The bit I'm using for the pilot hole is a 3mm. 
Pecking when drilling instead of one consistent push also helps keep the bit cooler. And finally is the 4mm drill bit for the final hole. The majority of the material has been removed from the hole, so this can be done in one go, and there's no need for pecking. Cutting oil is recommended. Remove the bit and clean away any chips. Then install the tap. The plate has kept the same position the whole time, maintaining the accuracy of a threaded hole. Power tapping is an option when you're using power from a drill. However, I do prefer doing this by hand, especially with harder materials. Apply cutting oil to the tap. Ensure the tap is tight in the chuck, then lower it into place. Rotate the chuck by hand while providing light downward pressure pushing the chuck down. The tap will thread into the material, take your time. If you feel any binding, back it out slightly to break out any chips and then continue to thread the hole. Once it's fully threaded, you'll feel no more resistance, meaning all the material has been cut. While holding the chuck in place, loosen the chuck and retract it. You can then remove the tap by hand. You may be required to remove the part and clean away any chips on the back side as it can create binding when removing the tap. For an alternative view to get a better look, moving on to another hole. First is the center drill bit. Line up the part. I like to spin the bit by hand to center up with the punch, then clamp it down into place. Apply cutting oil and then continue to drill the spot. When done, moving on to the pilot hole. This is a 3mm bit which is slightly undersized and compared to the required final hole. Apply more cutting oil again. And finally is the 4mm bit. Apply more cutting oil and continue to drill the hole. Clean away any chips. Install the required tap and tighten it into the chuck. Apply cutting oil to the tap. Lower the chuck into place, then continue to thread the hole, rotating the chuck by hand. Apply light pressure, don't force the tap as you can risk breaking it. If you feel binding, again back it out a couple turns, then continue to thread the hole. When the tap is fully through, the hole is completely threaded. Hold the chuck into place and remove the tap. Retract the chuck, then you can remove the tap by hand. You may be required to clean any chips on the back side if you are experiencing any binding. There may be burrs left over on the outer edges of the holes either from drilling or by tapping. A large drill bit can be used by hand. Rotate the bit and it should clean away any burrs. Here's the finished pieces. You should be left with a clean pointed thread profile. When a fastener is installed, there should be minimal play. If you plan on using any thread locker, the holes will need to be cleaned with a solvent first. This concludes the rest of my video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below and throw a like my way. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more metalworking videos. Thank you for watching.